Last weekend was our vision weekend. We launched our vision for 2023, which was, what was it? All All heart. I think we're getting better at keeping the vision uh, statement for the year for the church shorter and shorter, so it's easier and easier to remember. We had build, we've had all hearts, two words. We've had, what else have we had, Rachel? Believe, believe, believe. believe. I saw somebody this morning with our last year's, well, this year's shirt on, which is good because they're getting the last few weeks and months out of their Believe shirt. Uh, So I think that might have been Andrea in the back room, so in the parents' room. So good work supporting the 2022, holding on to 2023. I'm kind of in 2023 already, uh, but we are, we've got a few people holding on to this year. They don't want five weeks before Christmas. They're holding on. And so I am in a place where I'm excited about 2023, but yes, having to be disciplined to make sure we finish 22, 2022 well with strength. So if you missed last weekend, let me tell you, you need to go back, watch the online message from Pastor Rachel, jump onto the podcast and listen to that. If you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, that's a must. It's important. It's imperative. After you say yes to Jesus, you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Rosie, and also you subscribe to the podcast so you keep up to date with everything that's happening. And we talked about our two big vision goals. I'm not going to recap the whole message, but really they come down to this. Number one, being all heart in our return to worship, return to the gathering. We're going to build the skills and the size of our music team in next year, our hospitality team, our Next Steps team, so people have opportunity to grow and move forward in the call of God on their life. And we're going to be all heart in our commitment to our own personal spiritual disciplines of gathering together, reading the Word of God, giving to the things of God, giving our time and our resources. That's our first vision goal. Our second goal was being all heart in our love for others. And this is talking about our community reach. And we're going to continue to do that here or in Cessna, but in all allocations. We have community projects that we're launching across the life of the church in 2023. And we're going to continue to do that. Plus, we're running Alpha in every location for the first term of next year, possibly every term. That's what we're believing for. And so we're really believing to reach our community with the life-changing message of Jesus. And we know Alpha does that wonderfully well. And we're also going to continue to build our Creative Academy after years of struggling to kind of keep things moving forward. But I just want to celebrate Natalie this morning because two and a half years of very, very hard work. The Academy is alive and strong and moving forward. And we have brand, we have brand new location in Toronto with brand new students, something like seven or eight families, 13 students. And I just think, Natalie, you've done a phenomenal job to keep that thing moving forward. Because what we know, for those of us who call Beyond Church home, the Creative Academy is the most effective way to reach new people, new families in new places. It is by far the most effective way that we've reached communities in our churches ever. And so we just think that's fantastic. And then also in our all heart to reaching others and our love for others is our overseas missions work, which will continue in 2023, which is our support for our families in Vietnam. And we are going to go to Vietnam. Well, you can all, I don't think you can all go. Can we all go? It's a women's trip, isn't it? All right, there you go. Well, 2024, the men are going to Vietnam. All right, let's get into this message. All right, start the clock. This morning's message is called No Holding Back. No, it's not. It's called Hold Nothing Back. What's it called? <laughs> now, I'm gonna inc- I won't say this yet. I'm just gonna s- I've got a test coming later in this message, so just get ready for that. Hold Nothing Back. Deuteronomy chapter 30. If you've got a Bible, open it to Deuteronomy chapter 30. If you don't, grab your phone. Deuteronomy chapter 30. It's where our vision theme verse for 2023 comes from. And it says this, reading from verse 6. God, your God, will cut away... The thick calluses on your heart and your children's hearts, freeing you to love God, your God, with your whole heart and soul and live, really live. God, your God, will put all these curses on your enemies who have hated you and were out to get you. And you will make a new start. Everybody say, new start. start. Music to my ears. You will make a new start, keeping all his commandments. God, your God, will outdo himself making things go well for you. Who doesn't want to see things go well for them in 2023? You'll have babies, get calves, grow crops, enjoy an all-around good life. Yes, God will start enjoying you again, making things go well for you, just as he enjoyed doing it for your ancestors. But only if. Now, turn to the person on your left and say, but only if. Now, turn to your second choice. 
your second friend and on the right and say, but only if. Some people are sitting on their own. We've got to change that next week. We're all sitting together. Nobody sits alone at Beyond Church. I saw poor Kim over there. She's looking to her friends and there's none to be found. But only if... Hey, we're reading the Bible. Focus. Oh, she turned around to you. Here we go. But only if you listen obediently to God and keep the commandments and regulations written in this book of Revelation, nothing half-hearted here, you must return to God, your God, totally. Heart and soul. And here it is, holding nothing back. This passage is a prophetic vision that we are speaking over our church for 2023. And if you look at it, it is extraordinarily powerful because it speaks of things like restoration. I wonder what you have seen break in 2022 or 2021. I wonder what you've lost in 2022 or 20. What, what do you need to see Restore. Well, this verse speaks prophetically of restoration for us as a church, for you as an individual, for your family, for your business and workplace. It's a prophetic word about restoration, about realising lost dreams and the fulfilment, fulfilment of, of unfulfilled promises. This should excite us and get us enthusiastic to embrace what's to come. It talks about fresh starts and new beginnings and new things. It talks about things going well for you. It talks about fertility. It talks about multiplication. It talks about growth. It talks about abundance. It talks about provision and prosperity in every area of life, etc., etc., etc. What a promise. Does anyone in the room want to receive that promise in 2023? Oh, anybody online want to receive that promise in 2023? <laughs> Contained in this promise in Deuteronomy chapter 30, which we're taking a hold of for our year next year, our all heart year, is a gift from God. Because it's a key that guarantees that these promises are fulfilled in our lives and our church across the year and beyond. I wonder, did you see it? Did you see the key in that verse? Did you see the gift? You said it to your neighbour, but only if you, but only if. Come on, I think you should get excited about this because God's given you a gift because all these promises have a premise, but you don't have to wonder what it is because, but only if you would, what, what, but only if you would, what, well, you have, go back and have a look, but only if you would listen to me, God says, but only if you will obey me, God says, and but only if you would, what? Hold nothing back. Come on, this is a promise that we can take a hold of. And this morning, I just want to briefly talk with us about what it looks like to be the kind of person that is a but only if kind of person, the kind of person that listens to the vision that God has for their lives for this coming year and the kind of person that not just listens but does what God puts on their heart and the kind of person that doesn't just hear it and do it but the kind of person that does it in such a way that it's clear that they're holding nothing back, that they're an all heart kind of faith-filled believer in 2023. That's what I'm believing for all of us across the life of our church but only if, number one, you listen to God, but only if you listen. So that the powerful truth here is that the voice of God carries the sound of vision. The voice of God carries the sound of vision. When God speaks, things happen. When God speaks, things are created. When God speaks, the horizon begins to open. When God speaks, we can see beyond the moment. When God speaks, his voice carries the sound of vision. So we have to be attuned to the voice of heaven so we can hear the vision of God upon our lives. So here I want, to, I want to ask you, where do you go to hear the voice of God? Where do you go to hear the voice of God? Carry on it the sound of the vision he has for your life. Well, you can hear the sound of vision in atmospheres of faith. In atmospheres of faith, we can hear the sound of vision. And these are places like here today in church services, like when you go to conferences or when you go to those powerful prayer meetings where everyone's attuned to the, the voice of God. Maybe a missions trip in 2023 is where God turns up and shows you what it is that you, your life's purpose and destiny is all about. These are atmospheres of faith. 
because you won't find a God vision in a room full of negative, naysaying, devil's advocates. Oh, yeah, sure, but. Um, yeah, that's a good idea, but. Oh, but you have you ever thought about this? Oh, maybe, you know, really, I mean, it's you we're talking about. Naysayers. Negative Nellies. Anybody know a negative Nelly? I pray to God I'm never a negative Nelly. Neg- ne- never be a negative Nelly. Oh, is there anyone here called Nelly in the room online? <laughs> I'm sure you're a positive Nelly if you're here in the room or online. Position yourself, here we go, to hear the sound of vision. Hebrews 10.25, another gift. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another. Speak life and faith and vision into each other. When we're together in the gathering, there's an atmosphere of faith that releases the voice of God and it carries on at the sound of vision and we can see clearly what's coming. Are we in an atmosphere of faith? Are we regularly immersing ourselves in atmospheres of faith that show us where God wants us to be going? Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 says this. This is why it is so crucial that we be all the more engaged and attentive to the truths that we have heard so we don't drift off course. How engaged are we to the truth? How engaged are we? What do we do? You, you have to engage yourself. Someone can't be engaged on your behalf. You know, we, uh, we, I've, I've got some people in my world that are sort of going out with each other at the moment, some people that are looking to possibly, and you know, you preside over some weddings. And you can't just have an engagement with one person. You don't just turn up to the engagement party and, you know, Steve's there. And you say, Steve, hey, where's, where's Emily? Oh, no, I'm, I'm engaged, Emily, but, you know. Is, you, does she know about the engagement? Oh, I've got the party. I mean, if you want to be engaged, it takes two to tango. And so when this verse says that we should be all the more engaged, that means there's something because God's engaged. He's done all that he needs to do. He's looking for someone to step into an intimate relationship with him, to be engaged and all the more attentive to what he's doing and where he's going so that we don't drift off course. Because there's somewhere that he's calling us to go in 2023 because he wants to release all of that upon our lives, but only if we listen. And that's how we begin to listen. We also hear the sound of vision, the sound carried on God's voice from people of faith, not just in atmospheres of faith, but from people of faith. So I want to ask you, who are you with? Who are your friends, your close friends? Who are you spending time with midweek, on the weekends? You know, there are some places you have to be, like work. I mean, to a point as well, you probably don't have to be there, but you kind of have to be there, don't you? You know, you don't always get to choose where you want to work, but you're there. And so sometimes you don't get to choose who you work with, but you have to be with them. But if you get a chance to choose who you are with, here's the question. Who are you with? It's why we're so intentional at gathering like-minded people around a like-minded cause. It's called the mission of the church, and it's called life groups. And in life groups, you're with like-minded people who champion you on to the good things that God has put on your life for your vision, for your future. So are you in a regular small gathering of people that are championing you on and speaking vision into and over your life? Even on Sunday in church teams, there's nothing more exciting than us gathering in our front room as team members in our pre-service meeting. We have a a heart. Everyone has has an all-heart attitude toward the things of God. And that is a room full of faith, isn't it? Those who are on our team. It's a room full of an atmosphere of faith where people are speaking encouragement and life and blessing and favour over each other. Because we're serving together on teams. So who are you with? We hear the voice of God in atmospheres of faith, from people of faith, and finally, in the book of faith. This is where we hear, you know, the vision of God for our life. It's in here. But what I want us to do for 2023 is not approach this book out of habit or out of religion or out of routine. I want us to approach this book with an expectation It's faith-filled. It's believing that this isn't just going to be information that I read, but these words are going to bring transformation into my life. They're going to speak to me. I'm going to lift my level of expectation. It's going to be higher than ever before. And when I engage in the Word of God, I'm going to believe that God is speaking to me, that in His voice I'll hear the vision that He has for my life and my future. Because here's the good news. God is always speaking. Are we always listening. Whenever you can be in an atmosphere of faith, be there. 
whenever you can be with a person of faith, be with them. And whenever you can read the book of faith, read it. Number one, but only if we listen. Number two, but only if you obey. When God speaks, don't just listen. We want to be taking notes. I love seeing people in church grabbing out their notepad, grabbing out their phone. They're taking notes. Sure, you can watch it back online again later. You can listen to the podcast. But there's something about the engagement of the hands and the eyes and the mind at once. You're just there, yeah, 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 taking some notes, taking some notes. Not sure I agree with that, Pastor. I'll see about that later. Send you an email about that one. But everything else is really good. And I'll, I'll make sure I mention this later as well. But when God speaks through his word, we should be listening. When God speaks through his messengers, we should be taking notes. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 says this in the message paraphrase. It says, And then God answered, Write this. Write what you see. Write what you see. Write it in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. In other words, if you're going somewhere, if there's a vision for your life, if there's a future ahead of you, then you should be carrying with you the Word of God. So it should be written down specifically for you. What's God calling you to? What's on your life? What's on your heart? What's the mission and the vision that God's got for you? How do you see yourself positioned to help support the mission and the vision of this church in 2023? Well, write it down. Write it down so that when you're moving, you don't forget about it. It's with you all the time. Since this vision message, it says, is a witness pointing to what's coming. And then God answered, write it down. Write it down in big block letters. Because here's the truth. God's not looking for head nodding, fist pumping, Tongue wagging, lip service. He's looking for faithful obedience to his vision for your life. (laughs) You see, it's good for us to do what God asks us to do because God's for us, not against us. (laughs) So when we do what he asks us to do, it's a good thing. It might be a hard thing, but it's a good thing. Are we willing to not just listen, but obey what God is saying? Because he's looking for intentional commitment to specific and, and measurable things. I would encourage you to, what's it going to look like for you in March 2023? You know, what's God put on your heart for the first half of the year? If you don't know, spend some time in atmospheres of faith, with people of faith, in the book of faith. Spend some time listening to God and then once you get a hold of it, write it down, write it down, write it down. I believe in 2023, the first quarter of my year will look like this. I'm going to pray weekly for... You know, I'm believing God for this breakthrough in my business. I'm believing God for this rest, restored family to come, this restoration in my family. I'm going to write down what I'm seeing. You know, this and this kid with that, you know, that family member here, that family. I mean, why don't we just write the vision down for 2023? James chapter 1, verse 22. Remember, this is the book of James. I'm not saying this to you guys, all right? This is James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but. Now, I'm not talking to everybody in the room, guys, or online. This is just for the people who don't do what God asked them to do, which isn't you. You guys are always doing everything that God asks you to do. Come on. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Ooh. Act on what you hear. I'm, I'm going to make some time in a moment. The band's going to play... We're going to worship together. And when we do, I want you to do something that you might not normally do. I want you to begin to open up your heart to to God's voice. It might sound like you've done it before, but as I said, God's voice carries the sound of vision. And as you do that, I'm believing that God's going to just speak something into your heart about your future and a promise about the favour that He wants to bring to you for 2023 in certain areas of your life that you've been looking for strategic breakthrough in. And maybe in this time of worship that we're going to have in a moment, you could be sitting down, writing things down. You could be standing with your hands in the air. Maybe you need to be on your knees, repenting before God or just being grateful to be in His presence. Sitting silently, just absorbing what it is that God's ministering to you. or Whatever it might be, this is a moment for you who can act on what they hear. James goes on to say, those who hear and don't act are like those who look into a mirror, walk away, and two minutes later have no idea what they look like. Don't let this moment pass you by is what what that's saying. Don't just have a moment and move on. 
these glimpses, these moments can be transformational for you. So don't, don't look at the circumstances or the situation upon which this moment is built upon, but look upon it as a divine encounter with God himself in this moment at this time. Whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life, even out of the corner of his eyes. Come on, you don't need to have all the answers. You don't need to know everything, every single step ahead of you, but maybe just the next step, just a glimpse of what God's saying to you. If you can stick with it, come on, just take one step. If you're not a distracted scatterbrain, but a man or woman of action, that person will find delight and affirmation in the action. Come on, this is an encouragement, isn't it? That if we can hear what God's saying to us, if we can do what He's asking us to do, we can receive all that He has for our lives. But only if we listen, only if we obey. And finally, number three, only if we hold nothing back. Now, this is where the rubber really hits the road, and I'm going to really challenge you in this moment. Remember, it's not about head nodding, fist pumping, tongue wagging lip service. It's about faithful obedience. And this is where I'm asking you to be obedient to what I believe God's calling us to do in this moment. Deuteronomy 30 verse 10, it says this, Nothing half-hearted here. You must return to God totally, heart and soul, holding nothing back. What holds you back? I mean, what holds you back? Is it um, insecurity? What holds you back from just going, you know, at 100 miles an hour toward the things of God? Have you, have you not dealt with pride in your life yet? What's holding you back? Uh, are you self-conscious about what other people might think of you when you start to cry before God in His presence? What is it that holds you back? Is it a bitterness or grudge toward another person that you won't let go of because you're right and they're wrong? I mean, what, what holds you back? Is it... Is it Maybe it's an intellectual barrier. Maybe you just don't fully comprehend or understand how this could be so. God might be saying to you, hang on a minute, this is beyond anything that we can understand. This is a divine encounter with the Spirit of God. What holds you back? Holding nothing back in this moment, I believe, is going to set us free. Come on, for 2023. What's our promise? What's our promise? It says this. God will start enjoying you again, making things go well for you just as He enjoyed it doing it for your ancestors. We're believing for powerful fresh starts, restoration, the realization of lost dreams, the fulfillment of unfulfilled promises, multiplication, fertility, growth, abundance, provision, prosperity, but only if, but only if. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to read this verse to you. And we're going to begin just to worship together. Jesus said from Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Love the Lord your God with all your passion, all your prayer and intelligence. In other words, with all of your heart. Love your God with all of your heart. This is the most important, the first on any list. To love God with all of our heart. But there's a second. Love others as well as you love yourself these two commandments they are everything that the law and the prophets hang from it's only intimacy with Jesus that shifts our heart toward loving others so come on church why don't you just embrace this moment right now we are praying Holy Spirit that in this moment you just begin to speak to us begin to hear your voice, voice from heaven, we pray for the Spirit of God just to begin to move on every single heart and every single soul, open our hearts right now, Spirit of God just pour your presence upon us, let us sense that you're filling us with your anointing right now, the empowerment to do what you've called us to do. Thank you, Jesus. Poor in spirit.